following program is recorded content created by the Truth Network. It's Matt Slick Live. Matt is the founder and president of the Christian Apologetics Research Ministry, found online at CARM.org. When you have questions about Bible doctrines, turn to Matt Slick Live for answers. Taking your calls and responding to your questions at 877-207-2276. Here's Matt Slick. All right, everyone, welcome back to the show. And uh, if you were listening the past few days, hopefully it'll be interesting as well today. If you want to give me a call on this lovely July 24th, 2024, all you have to do is dial 877-207-2276. I want to hear from you. If you want, you can also email me at info at carm.org. Info at carm, C-A-R-M dot O-R-G. And you can uh, put in the subject line, radio comment, radio question, easy peasy. And uh, we usually get to those on Fridays. Now, there was something else I was just going to say. What was it? Can't remember. Eh, that's all right. No big deal. Hey, well, we just jump on the phone. Let's see who's the longest waiting is. Oh, okay. Ryan. Hey, Ryan. Welcome. Yeah, welcome back. You're on the air. Hello, Matt. Thank you very much for inviting me to call back. I was uh, here two days ago, and we were discussing First John two two and John one twenty nine, and yeah. you invited me to call back and to discuss this further. Sure. Um, uh, if you don't mind, I've um, uh, printed up a thing from Carm dot org about how to do uh, biblical exegesis, and you have ten steps on there about uh, how to interpret scriptures. Um, and um, yeah. when I do um, have done uh, uh, biblical interpretation, I have also been asked what sort of procedure that I use to um, to interpret Scripture. And it's ten steps. Would you mind if I read off exactly what I do to do uh, biblical sure. exegesis? Okay, sure, go ahead. Step one: lexicography, morphology. What is the word meanings? What is the word usage? Number two is um, etymology, history of the word meanings. How has the meaning changed over time? How is the current biblical meaning different from the historic non-biblical meanings? How is it similar? How does the current meaning enhance or contrast with the historic meaning? And of course, that's the Theological Dictionary of the New Testament. And, uh, you know, I've had my 10 volume uh, set since 1976. So um, you, I'm sure you're familiar with that also. The okay. third is uh, compare and contrast. How uh, have different biblical authors used the same terms how have different non-biblical authors used the same terms? How is the current usage similar to other usage? How is the current usage different from other users? Step four is grammar. What is the grammatical structure of the line, the paragraph, and the passage? Number five is authorship. Who wrote it? Who was it written to? When was it written? Immediate context. What is the topic? Is this the beginning of the topic discussion, the middle of the topic discussion, or the end of the topic discussion? And, of course, that's very germane when you're dealing with Hebrews, since the first 11 chapters is one narrative. Okay, then um, um, well, the... Just, uh, just summarize them really quickly, because, okay, you just read the, the, you know, like, look at the context, look at the author, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. Well, you but there, there's more to it than that I get into. I get into the linguistics. How is the text influenced by the immediate worldview? Culture, okay. what is the cultural context of the writing? And okay. then exegetical history is my last step. And I ask the questions, does my interpretation agree with the traditional treatment of the passage? Does it enhance it or does it uh, go against it? And if it enhances it or um, agrees with it, then I stay with it. If it doesn't, okay. then I throw it out and I start all over. Okay. okay. That is the right. process that I go through. Okay, Good. can we agree that that is a reasonable process of going through biblical interpretation? It's reasonable. Okay. Okay. Um, and uh, so I have a question for you. If I went to James 2, and I read, um, Faith without works is dead, and then I turned over to Romans one seventeen, where it says, Just shall live by faith, and I say, oh, well, James said this, so when he says the just shall live by faith, that means faith without works is dead and therefore you're not just. Would you agree with me that um, um, that would be a misappropriation of the book of James? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. The last time I've, um, I talked with you, I thought you knew some things, and perhaps I was imbibing some knowledge that you had that you did not have. So I'm going to try to be careful and not assume that you know things that I thought you didn't know. So anyway, okay. my point is, is that, um, and I think you would also agree, that James is a different author, has a different context, 
have a different meaning. And therefore, when you take that context out of that and impose it upon Romans, then you are misappropriating and misusing Romans and misusing James. Okay, and I so contend you, that we that get is this. Good. We'll go ahead and just get to the to the point. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The point is, two days ago, you tried taking a, a context from Matthew and imposing it upon John, and you tried taking up uh, from uh, the Old Testament atonement ideas and tried imposing it upon John, oh, okay. and you did exactly what I did when I took James and tried to impose it upon Romans. Okay. No, I would disagree with you. So, would you have a particular verse you want to look at? John one twenty nine, First John 2.2. 2. That's the one you wanted me which, to call back and one, ask about. Which one you want to look at first? John one twenty nine. John one twenty nine. John one twenty nine. All right. So, uh, the next day he saw Jesus coming to him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Okay. What about it? Mm-hmm. Okay, clearly, um, I think in, in the context of John and the prologue of, um, of the fourth gospel, the world is clearly referring to all of creation. And take it away is different than atonement and different than, uh, than uh, propitiation. And uh, it is a sacrifice of Christ in the aspect that he, uh, that he is creator of all things. All things fell with Adam, and he died to redeem everything that was okay. lost. Okay. Okay, so like the Colossians one twenty relationship. So uh, took away the sins of the world. What's the word world mean? No, it's not sins. It's not sins. It's sin. It's not referring okay. to the acts of sin. It's referring to the status of being fallen. That is what sin refers to. Okay, the status of being fallen. So he took yes. away our fallenness? He What he did was he suspended... Um, his wrath against all of creation, which he uh, could have destroyed it all because of the uh, the sin of Adam. He had mercy upon all of creation, and he suspended that through the sacrifice of Christ. Just as in First John 2, 2, he did the same thing with wrath and uh, uh, toward all of mankind. Okay. Um, you're not making any sense to me. So when it says he, he takes away the sin of the world, did he take away the sin of the world? Yes, he did, of course. Okay. So the world means what a people and or creation uh, the earth what all of creation all of creation, all creation since all of creation fell with Adam. all right okay so he took the sin of away of the people as well right yes all of creation yes okay so people are in the creation so we're talking about the people right now so he took away the the sin of the people who are judged to damnation correct okay so they don't have any sin because it's removed and yet they're damned? How's that, no, I how's that work? I, I did not say it was removed, okay? Oh. And, uh, the, it the says it takes away. Is, uh, uh, yes, it does. And that is not atonement, that is expiation. So it's a different aspect of the sacrifice of Christ well, uh, than atonement or propitiation. Yeah, expiation is not what we're going to be talking about. It's related to propitiatory sacrifice. But look, what we're talking about here is it takes it away. Did he take away the sin of the people who are damned? Yes, of course. How did he take away their sin if they're damned because they're damned for their sin? I don't get it. Uh, well, they are damned because, again, they love the darkness more than light. And we Is see this time sin? and time and time again. That's huh? sinful. Yeah, that's sinful to do that. That's correct. Right. So God took that away from them, right? Yes. Okay. Then why are they judged? And the reason they are condemned? Because they've, uh, they have uh, chosen to... Uh, uh, love the darkness more than light. So but the reason sin. they are condemned is not because Christ did not die for them. But the wait, reason wait, wait. they've uh, but that's sin. They took it away. So how could they be judged for what doesn't exist anymore? It's taken away. I just explained it to you. This is a suspension of God's judgment against all of creation, and therefore uh, the the reason they are condemned is not because of a lack of uh, the sacrifice of Christ, but because of their own choosing to. Um, uh, to uh, okay. follow well, uh, the darkness rather than the light. But I'm curious because you said their, their sin is taken away. So that means they don't have any sin. Right. Is that right? Well, well, you're confusing expiation with atonement. This is not atonement. I'm just asking it's like if it's taken away. Is, 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 no, I'm not bringing mm-hmm. up appreciation or expiation or atonement. I'm just saying mm-hmm. it's taken away. I'm just asking what right. the text says. So you're the one d- violating your own rules. So is taken away, no. is the sin taken away of those people who are judged for damnation and go to hell? Yes. So the reason they're okay, condemned then. is because of their own 
choices, not because of the lack of sacrifice of Christ. That's why okay. no man is without but, excuse. But but that's sin. They've sinned. And you say their sin's taken away. Is all of their sin taken away? Listen close. When it refers to sin, it's talking about the fallenness of all things. Okay? Fallenness. It's not talking about wait, 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 sin wait. plural. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Fallenness. No, uh, trees are fallen. Okay? The dirt come is on, fallen. You can, come on, Matt. Come on, Matt. You know we're talking about the fall. The fall in, in Genesis. Hold the on. fall of Adam, Hold which resulted on. in the fall of all creation. Hold on. Stop. Not the Stop. fall of a tree. Stop. All of creation is affected by sin. The fall entered the world. It's there, therefore, okay. I'm, trees I'm die. We have plagues. We have earthquakes. We have storms. We have mm -hmm. famines. Yes. This is because of the effect of sin in the world. When you say the sin Correct. is taken away, that's why I focused earlier mm -hmm. just on the individuals. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, if an individual, a person's sin is taken away, it doesn't exist anymore. Is that correct? No, it's been suspended. His, uh, his judgment so has it's been not, suspended. Oh, in John oh 1, so it's suspended. It's not correct. taken away, it's suspended. Well, that's what take it away means in John one twenty nine. So what's the verb to take away in Greek? Okay, T to take it away. It is, uh, it is not atonement. Greek? It is not propitiation. This is a this is an Aramaic idiom, and if you had uh, studied okay. this passage, you would know that it was an Aramaic idiom. Okay. Wow! So okay. the Greek word so is it's, it's foreign to the Old Testament. It, it's okay. Iro, it's and it, foreign it to it the means, Old Testament. It means to take away, to raise up, mm -hmm. to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can uh, mm -hmm. raise the grant the. Uh, the stones, the, the word has a lot of different meanings. So mm -hmm. let's see. So when we go to John, uh, let's see, the ESV says uh, takes away, uh, as does the King mm -hmm. James, takes, takes, takes away. Look at all these versions, mm -hmm. takes away, L-E-B, N-I-V. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. looking, scanning through them. They all say the same thing, take it away, take it away. Mm -hmm. So right. if something's taken away, is it still there anymore? Once again, this is referring to the suspension of God's judgment against all of creation. That's not what it that's says. why it it's referring to fallenness. It doesn't say suspend. It's, it says, well, that's take the away. meaning of take it away, uh, oh. the, the fallenness of the world. So you didn't okay. even know what the Greek word was, and yet you're telling me what it is? Well, you are more fluent in Greek than I am, that's for sure. I don't doubt that. And uh, it's been a long time since I took Greek, and you've kept up with it far better than I have. I don't doubt that. Um, so what you're telling me then is that uh, is that the sins taken away it doesn't say suspended. That's a that's something you're just adding into the text. So uh, so it doesn't say that, but it you know, the word is used for pick up, take, take away, uh, remove, carry, pull away, things like that. So that's why they translate it as take away, not suspend. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. That doesn't fit the semantic mm -hmm. domain of the of the word. So, you're what you're doing is you're changing the meaning of the word in order to make it fit mm -hmm. your theology. That's not good. Well, that's what you do also when you try to limit world to just the elect, and that's why you have to I impose didn't. upon it from the book of Matthew. I when you take the uh, when you take the context of Matthew uh, and impose it hold upon on. John, I told you, you that is what you're doing. I did not do that. I told you I don't do that. Yes, you did. No, I yes, don't. You do. You no. do. That's show what, me where. That's what you did after two the days break. Ago, Matt. After the break, show me where. Okay, hold on. Hey, folks, we'll be right back after the break. We'll go through one more little session with them, and then we'll get to the callers. I hope you're enjoying this. We'll be right back after these messages. Please stay tuned. It's Matt Slick Live, taking your calls at 877-207-2276. Here's Matt Slick. All right, everybody, welcome back to the show. Let's do one more segment of this, and then we'll uh, we'll move along. Let's see, Ryan, are you still there? Yes, I am. Thank you very much for letting me hang on. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, two days ago, did you not uh, refer to Matthew and saying that Christ came for the lost sheep of Israel and use that as a reason for... Uh, uh, denying that uh, world in John one twenty nine was referring to at least all of creation or all of mankind. Well, um, he says he was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, sheep or mm -hmm. individuals. 
So uh, Jesus was only sent to the people of Israel covenantally. Okay. So. Okay, but when, now you're. Uh, but so, uh, what does that have to do with the um, the context of John one twenty nine? Uh, I'm just saying that the word world has different meanings in different contexts. That's what I'm saying. So what does it mean in John one twenty nine? Well, I don't know exactly. I think it, I probably would assume it means uh, all the nation groups and peoples and stuff, not just the Jews. Okay, so if you haven't noticed, there are, there are only two kinds of peoples. There's Jews, Jews and Gentiles. That's all of creation. I mean, excuse also, me, that's all of mankind. There's also the elect and the non-elect. There's the saved and the non-saved. There's a the Christian and the non-Christian. There is, there is no way that you can restrict this to just the elect, neither uh, this I didn't do or John that. 3, 16 or 17. No, no, no. I'm yeah. correcting you. You just your, tried to. I, no, okay. I'm correcting you. Your, you tell I, me what this is. Hold on, this, Ryan. Hold on. I'm correcting your error. I'm being polite with you, but you don't realize how many mistakes you're making. You're prideful and you're stubborn. I'm trying to tell you, you made a mistake. You said there's two kinds of people, the Jews and the I was saying there's other groupings that you can do with people as well. It's all I did. I didn't say okay, world so meant kind of either one of here? those, which you took one of the several that I offered. So that's what I, I said it meant. You have got to stop doing this, Ryan. I ask you the questions. Okay. I ask you, did he take away the sin of the world? And you and I said, let's focus on individuals. And you say, yeah, he takes it away. But then you say it's suspended. That's not what it says. It doesn't say he suspended it. You are committing the fallacy of putting your theology above the word of God. You are doing that. Okay, you, okay, you tell me what world means in John one twenty nine. I don't know exactly what it means. I told you already, it can mean a range of things that are, that are exegetically possible. Okay, so is one of those exegetically possible uh, interpretations referring to all of creation? It, yes, it can. But you see, here's the thing. Okay. The thing is, if the sin is taken away, I have a question for you. How is a person who's damned for their sin guilty if their sin is taken away? Because they love the darkness more than light. That is sin. It's taken away. So how can they go to hell mm -hmm. if their sin's taken away? I just explained it to you because they choose uh, to uh, uh, enjoy the darkness more than light. Okay. That is sin. Uh, uh, their, their loving guard darkness more than light is sin. Mm -hmm. Therefore, that sin is included in the sin of the world. So, well, no. did he? Did Jesus take away that sin too, or not? Or is it limited atonement? Yes. So that's why they're uh, with well, which not, is well, you're there without excuse when they're condemned. What, what is it? Did he take all of their sin away, or not all of their sin away? Which is it? He took away everything that was uh, the result of the fall. Okay. Yes. So all sin is taken away from all people. How do they go to hell then? Mm -hmm. Because they chose the darkness more than light. They chose but that to is sin. To, uh, that's that's sin. They're choosing to do okay. something sinful. Was that sin taken away mm -hmm. too or not? Yes, it was. And oh, once again, so the, that so sin the, the that they're going they go to, hell to hell for is taken away, but they're going to hell for that which doesn't exist is taken away. It's gone. Wow. Well, again, this is why no man is without excuse, because the sacrifice of Christ is sufficient for the sins of okay. all mankind and for the sin of the fallenness of all things. Okay, apparently you don't know what world means because you haven't studied it in John one twenty nine. Okay, wow. so apparently you haven't yeah, studied you that. What. So you don't know tell if it's what. referring to all of creation. Tell you what, why don't you go to CARM and look up the table section on CARM and look up my examination of the word world in every single instance of where it occurs. Have you done okay. that? Have you done that? Um, actually, no, uh, well, I just went through. Well, the thing is, I've gone through no, exactly what I do with biblical exegesis. Jesus. I just I'm taking you, you through that. You agree? I've done my own translation, I've done my own exegesis. Okay. <laughs> And so, by the way, I, I guess we've okay. uh, come to the same point again. So why don't you enjoy your guano buffet for your furtive symbiotic sycophants and enjoy yourself, okay? Your ignorance and your stupidity is a, uh, is a degradation to the cause of Christ and to the cause of uh, apologetics. You are ignorant and you're arrogant and you are a stupid debater. Okay. Well, and yet I beat you all the time. Wow. All right, folks. So, uh... <laughs> I let him say it because that's what we call hate mail. And I love that stuff. Boy, 
Well, okay, let's get on the next longest wait in person is Alan. Alan, welcome. You're on the air. Hey, man, how's it going? <laughs> it's going fine. How are you doing? Yeah, <laughs> doing all right. I, I want to say a comment with the last caller is that um, uh, as, as much as you have hate in your heart for Matt, um, I don't think God would want you to be doing that. You know, <laughs> it's, it's hilarious that he was spreading so much hate to you when yeah, it's very clearly stated that you should love. And who are you if you only love your brothers? You know, so he may not he, believe you're saved. Well, he but, got cornered. He got cornered. Yeah. And he doesn't know how to get out yeah. of it. So except to attack. So anyway, so what do you got, buddy? Uh, yes. So I'm. So one of the things it was about. Um, I wanting to narrow down. I wanting to um, get these foundations of definitions down for words. Sure. Like for example, I tried looking up deacon, and having a hard time actually finding a de- a, a strict definition for deacon because there's like certain ones for like Roman Catholicism. And I see some some information on your website, mm-hmm. but I don't have like a clear like this is a glossary of this sure. this this and this, or like stuff like deacon church mm-hmm. stuff like that. Well, here we go. You see, a word means what it means in context, and then a word can have a range of meanings, a semantic domain. So the word diakonos, mm-hmm. okay, it's twelve forty nine in in um, the Strong's Concordance. And it occurs 29 times in 27 verses. And it's translated as servant. And I'm, look, I'm scrolling through. I don't know if you can see. Also, minister. In the NASB it is. And, of course, deacons. All right. And uh, let's see. There we go. So what we do is we look at the, how the word appears in its different contexts. Okay, that's what we do. So in the pastoral mm-hmm. epistles where we're talking about the issue of what their office is. That's in 1 Timothy. And it says in 1 Timothy 3.8, deacons must be. Now, what is a deacon? It comes from the word uh, diakonos. It comes from, you know, to serve. So there are pastor elders. There are just elders. There's bishops. And there's deacons. And the deacons are the ones who are supposed to serve, because that's what the word means. So a deacon in the church is someone who serves and provides and helps. And then and we'll get back to it after the break, because there's more. Okay, so hold on, buddy. Hey, folks, we'll be right back after these wor- uh, messages, so please stay tuned. We'll be right back. It's Matt Slick Live, taking your calls at 877-207-2276. Here's Matt Slick. All right, everybody, welcome back to the show. Hope you're enjoying the show. And if you want to give me a call, it's 877-207-2276. And we need to get back to Alan as soon as the producer reactivates. There we go. Hey, Alan, buddy, welcome. You're on the air. Well, thank you, Matt. Okay. So what do you got? Uh, oh, I just wanted to get more into it. So, like, oh, that's right. would you um, would you say a a reasonable definition for deacon would be an assistant of a church? It's reasonable, uh, but you can have an assistant who's a, a woman, and so then it would be an insufficient definition because women can't be deacons mm-hmm. either. Okay. Yeah, and that's one thing too. Is like, why well, I want to get like the the deacon thing because I want because I know one of the I don't remember what the website was. Let me see real quick. It was uh, it was tms.edu. It had uh, there was a church that was recommended for me, and I looked at it because I was looking at the uh, leadership, and it had a section for deaconesses, and I was wondering what your take on that is, and if if there potentially mislabeling it, mislabeling it's them potential. as deaconesses rather than... Yeah. 
Yeah, because even though the Bible says deacons, you know, for example, First Timothy three twelve, deacons must be husbands of only one wife, good manners of their children, etc. And so, hold on a sec. So what that's saying here, it's uh, Andres Miesquinaikos in the Greek, and uh, it just means husbands uh, of one wife, and so a woman can't fit that bill. So a deacon uh, can't be a woman by biblical mandate. It's just it. So this is the pastoral epistle. So a church that have women deacons is not submitting to the scriptures in that area, and that's a problem. Now, some may say that they're just servants of the church. Well, they call him a servant, but don't call him a deacon because the word deacon has a, an ecclesiastical meaning to it. But a servant is far less ecclesiastically minded. So they could have someone with the same function with different titles. Now, we don't want to be too slick about it, if you get my drift, but we've got to be careful. Uh, so we don't want women to be deacons in the sense that they have those deacon uh, responsibilities mm -hmm. yep okay yeah I guess it's one of the things I would need to research more on because I, I still have a rough time differentiating between deacon and assistant um, okay generally speaking a deacon is someone who will take care of the needs of others an assistant might help a pastor arrange a flight a deacon wouldn't do that, though it could. But a deacon would be the one who, say, someone comes to the church, a, a woman and uh, living in her car, and she needs food for the children that's in her car. A deacon, that's, that's when the deacons step in, and, traditionally speaking, and they would take care of her and do what's right. That's not an assistant's job. Okay. So, so I guess if you break it down more, someone... Say if a woman holds, woman is a member of the church and she holds the door open for someone who is uh, lame. Uh huh. Is that an, an act that a deacon would do or an, or an assistant? Well, deacons breathe and an assistant would breathe. Because they both do the same thing doesn't mean they're the same office. So holding a door open for mm -hmm. somebody is just polite. But the issue of a deacon, I don't see the, the issue of deacons being uh, doctrinally. Um, specified the way a pastor is. Pastor's an elder, you go to First Timothy 5.17, you can do that. But uh, it says deacons must be men of dignity, not double-tongued or addicted to wine, fond of sordid gain, holding to the mystery of the faith with a clear conscience. These men must be tested. Let them serve as deacons. Excuse me. Serve as deacons. And it's from the Greek word diakonoi. Again, actually it's a different one. Dekoneo, the verb to serve which is said to cognate. And so uh, they're, they're there to serve in that capacity. So what does it mean to serve? Apparently, there were uh, many needs of the early brethren, and the deacons were the ones who did that job of divvying out money, help, whatever it might have been, housing for the people in need. That's not an assistant. An assistant aids an individual who, for example, a pastor. I, so to speak, have assistants. You know, I have assistants like that help me with the ministry in varying areas, but they're not deacons. Mm -hmm. So, okay. All right. Um, how, I think that helps me a lot more. Um, how would you describe the difference between a church and a ministry? A church has a... Uh, Usually it has worship in it, the adoration of God, the preaching of a sermon, the administration of the sacraments. A ministry does not. Karm is a ministry. So I might step into preaching periodically uh, and teaching uh, more often than not, but we don't administer the sacraments here. We don't do anything like that. So it doesn't constitute what we would call a, a church. It's a ministry. Okay. Okay. Um, I guess the last part of it uh, is what are the differences between even evangelicism, uh, a missionary, and the act of witnessing? And evangelicalism is a movement for, to preach the gospel. Evangelical comes from the Greek word euangelia, which is the word gospel. So it's preaching the gospel, evangelizing, uh, evangelical ministry. Uh, 
and a missionary is someone who is called by God and recognized by church, a church or churches, to go do a certain thing in a ministerial sense. Preaching the gospel to a lost tribe, it could be uh, leading a, a men's group at a certain uh, place in a city, whatever. It could be varying things. What was the third thing you said? Uh, witnessing. Witnessing is something that everybody is supposed to do. And not everybody does, but we're generally all people are called to do that. But if you're your mom at home taking care of the kids, you're not witnessing in that sense. But when you get out in the real world, so to speak, then other opportunities arise. So everybody's supposed to do that kind of a thing. Where a deacon is male only, a minister is male only, ministry is related to church work. Uh, uh, a missionary could be male or female, could be supported by a church under their ecclesiastical authority and sending. And witnessing is just something that we're all called to do. Okay. Okay. So, so a missionary doesn't have to be a deacon per se because women can be right. missionaries. Is that correct? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. Good deal. Okay. All right. All right, man. I think that helps me a lot. I appreciate it, Matt. Okay, buddy. God bless. Okay. All right. Let's go over to Ron from Wake Forest, waiting 34 minutes. Thanks for the long wait. What do you got, buddy? Yes, sir. I was uh, listening, and I wanted to get the scriptures you shared with a young lady yesterday come out the rapture and how you, you go through the triple, be after the tribulation. Yeah, you go to Matthew 24, all right? And okay. All right. what it says is that... Uh, in verse 3, they asked Jesus, what will be the sign of your coming when all these things happen, the end of the age? And he says that there will be wars, rumors of wars, famines, earthquakes, you will be delivered over to tribulation, many will fall away, false prophets, lazy, uh, lawlessness will increase, love will grow cold, the gospel of the kingdom will be preached to the whole world. So there's lots of things like that. And then it says, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of in uh, Daniel, to then flee, because there's going to be a lot of trouble. And it says, unless those days be cut short, no life would be left. So this is talking about a lot of trouble, a lot of pain, a lot of suffering. Then, just as the lightning comes from the east of the west, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. All right? So what he's doing there is talking about that, and then what a lot of people don't know, he says, wherever the corpse is, the vultures gather. That's what Jesus said. Then he says, immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light. And that's Matthew 24, 29 through 30. Because he says, after the tribulation, then in verse 31, he says, he will send forth his angel with a great trumpet. But if you turn to 1 Corinthians 50, 52, then you find out yes, that... Let me get over there. It says... In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, the trumpet uh, will sound, okay, and the dead will be raised. That's at the last trumpet when the dead are raised. And furthermore, right. when you go to First Thessalonians 4, starting at verse 16, the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Well, that's at the last trumpet, because that's what 1 Corinthians 15, 52 says. The last trumpet is when the dead are raised. Now, when you go back to Matthew 24, you'll see that it's after the tribulation that the trumpet is blown. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Yes, I wanted to research, because it may, it may sense it. It may sense it. Okay. Hold on, buddy. We've got a break. Okay. Hold on for after the break. All right. Hey, folks, be right back after these messages. If, if Ron's still there, be right back. Please stay tuned. It's Matt Slick Live, taking your calls at 877-207-2276. Here's Matt Slick. All right, and welcome back to the show. Ron, are you still there? Yes, sir. All right. I'm still here. Okay, so I gave you some stuff kind of quickly because we were running out of time, but did that help? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Like I said, I've always else. been, you know, been taught. I've always been taught, you know, that the rapture is going to occur, you know, occur before 
uh, for the tribulation. tribulation yeah. you, you know, mm-hmm. I, it doesn't. So I wanted, look like you know, it, though, what you it? said made sense. No, That's sir. Right. I, I read Matthew yesterday, and what you said made sense. I want to study it more. And also, you got to go to Matthew thirteen, and you need to find okay. the parable of the wheat and the tares, because this really is yes, interesting. Sir. Because it says, uh, you know, in verse 24, he gave them the parable of the tares, you know, and the, the good and the bad. And uh, he says in verse 30, allow both to grow together until the harvest, the time of the harvest, I'll say to the reapers, first gather up the tares. So wait a minute. So the first ones gathered at the harvest are the wicked. That's what Jesus said right. in Matthew 12, 30. Then if you go to Matthew twelve forty, he says, he's, he interprets it. Let me go out to 39, though. The enemy who sowed them is the devil, and the harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. Just as the tares are gathered up and burned with fire, so shall it be at the end of the age. So the ones who are taken first at the harvest are the wicked. Now, that's something I have never heard a preacher preach in a pulpit in all my 44 years Me. going to church. Okay. Me either. <laughs> yeah. And in fact, when I discovered this, and, and it's new to, when it was new to me, I'm not saying you know, others hadn't found it, of course, but it took me a couple of years uh, of doing radio before I finally started admitting that's what it says because I was concerned. I said, how come I've not heard this before? And if I've not heard it before, that's a warning. Because what? Come on, how could I not get that? others not get it? And I'm seeing it. That doesn't make any sense. So I didn't see any other commentaries that dealt with it. So or preachers. So I was hesitant. After a while, I said, "Well, that, it's just what it says." So I had to. I already by then fit it in to my eschatological view. And so what my view is that the kingdom of God is now, as Jesus said, the kingdom of God is within you. He is the king. He will take out of his kingdom the stumbling blocks. That's what happens at his return. The first one's taken out of the wicked. That's what he says. And, uh, you know, two men in the field, one is taken, one is left. That's the, the wicked. And you go to, that's what, that's what the context is. You go to Matthew uh, 24, Luke 17, and you find it, and you read, and it's the wicked who are taken. It's, it's obvious. It's been 100% uh, people that I've shown that to. Uh, two men in the field, one is taken, one is left. When I show it to them in Scripture, 100% have said, you're right, that's what it is. It's the wicked who are taken. 100%. Mm-hmm. So that's what it is. Well, okay. So then it looks like, and this is a radical different view. Because think about this, the pre-trib rapture view, and let me exaggerate it a little bit, because not all Christians who hold to that are like this. A lot of them are very godly or very evangelical, praise God for them. But if I were to take that side and say, then it would make the case for the pre-tribulation rapture that we are not in the kingdom of God now, we're in the devil's realm, and we need to escape the devil's realm. And we're going to do that in the rapture. So don't be that concerned about the devil's realm. We've got another one coming. What What if that was false and it was the, the view, we are in the kingdom of now, of God right now. Christ is the Lord. Well, how come it's so bad? Because we're not doing our jobs. And so he says, I'll take out of his kingdom the stumbling blocks. And the first one's taken out of the wicked. Happens at the end of the age. And those are the ones who are taken, and it's at the last trumpet, 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty-two, and in, uh, Jesus says in Matthew 24, uh, 39, I think it was, what was it? Go back and forth. Uh, that the, after the tribulation of those days is when this occurs. And so when he returns and, and grabs people. So, I mean, it's just, I, you know, I don't, I, I'd like to see people deal with that. I haven't heard anybody do it. I need to do a uh, video on it. You know, yes, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Twenty-nine. That's right. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be dark, and the moon will not give its light. The stars will sky will fall from the sky. And I know what the the post mills say. We won't get into that now. The sign of the son of man will appear in the sky. The tribes of the earth will mourn to see the son of man coming in the clouds. Just like it was prophesied that this is how he would return in Acts one nine to eleven. This is a prophecy of his return. And he will send forth his angels with a great trumpet and gather together his elect from the four winds. 
So the, the okay, the great trumpet, that's the gathering of the elect. And that's the last trumpet because it says, We who are alive remain. We'll be caught up together with the Lord. That's First Thessalonians 4, 16 to chapter 5, verse 2. And First Corinthians 15, 52 says it's the last trumpet. So it goes on and on. I just, you know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm messing people up. <laughs> I do. I mess people up. You know, I've had a lot of people say, Matt, I love your teaching. I don't like it because you messed me up. You know. <laughs> You're welcome. No, you know, I've learned a lot listening to you. Okay. And at the very least, if people disagree with me and they study the Word of God, praise God. Mission accomplished. You know, you don't right. have to agree with me. Just study. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, man. Yes, Got to get going. All right. You have a good night. Okay. God bless. All right, now let's get to Ty from North Carolina. Ty, welcome. You're on the air. Ty. Ty. Hey, Matt. How you doing? Doing all right. Hanging in there, man. What do you got, buddy? So my question is based on Matthew 10, 23. Mm -hmm. uh, after he tells the disciples not to go to the Gentiles that go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And then here in 10, 1023, he says, you will not finish going through the cities of Israel before the Son of Man comes. Okay. Is he speaking of the second coming there? That's one of the possible interpretations, because there was about two million people in the area at that time, and about a thousand cities and villages. He says, you're not going to finish. We're going to them all before I return. And it was thousands of square miles. So the Jewish leaders and the Romans would have hindered the disciples' teaching. And we know that they did a great deal. The Jews did and the Romans did when they, they sacked Jerusalem. So uh, they didn't finish. Okay. It says, okay, yeah, but you will not finish. So they didn't finish, be they didn't finish before he comes, though, right? That's what he's saying. Right, before he returns. That's what it seems to be, okay? All right. Okay. Well, any big problem with that or All right. comment? You that was my question. Okay, good enough? Yeah. Okay. All right, man. There you go. Appreciate okay. it. Okay. All right, man. God bless. Okay. So, God hey, bless. folks, if you want to... Okay, there we go. Folks, if you want to give me a call, all you got to do is dial 877 207 2276. Vernell from North Carolina, welcoming on the air. Hey, Matt, I'm one of your faithful listeners, and I just want to say you're doing an awesome job. I have okay. learned a lot from you and continuously listen to you. And I want to say to the gentleman that called and wanted to debate you, he was so rude, so out of line. And somebody's supposed to be knowing the word of God and walking with God, but call you out of your name because you didn't agree with him. It's okay to agree and disagree or disagree to agree, but you don't have to get to that level. So that tells me where he's at. If I was a new Christian in Christ and hearing him say what he said and how he responded, he got on my nerve the other day saying, you should know that. You should know that. And I'm like, oh, will you stop, please? Because you're, you're, you're not really. It, it was frustrating me because I know he just wanted to debate you. You continue to do what you're doing. I think you're doing an awesome job. And don't let people like that, the naysayers and somebody one like him who say, God, how can you say you love me who you have not seen and, and hate the one? And he was hating you because of your knowledge. And I praise God for you and continue for protection and everything that surround you. That man need to get some new discernment on how he should respond because he cannot beat you in what you know. Okay, he knows what he knows, but you know what you know, too. So that's what I'm saying, man. I got you 1,000 over here. That's all <laughs> well, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. A lot of people were commenting in the the chat. He'll probably call up and, and apologize. That's one of the good things about him. He when he makes a mistake, he called up and apologized, and that's fine, you know. But uh, I think he the logic is... He shouldn't do that live, right. though, yeah, with right. listening. And yeah. if he's trying to win souls, he just lost He just lost me. 
because I'm not lost, but he lost me as far as listening to him. I don't mm. like no that. That's not right. That just didn't get it. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 Well, I get it. That's, that's good. <laughs> I do appreciate that. <laughs> but I he needs to straighten up and tone down a little and stop being so overzealous because that's what I picked up from him. He yeah. was quite overzealous, and that is not good. Yeah, it's like being, over, it's being um, obstreperous. I love that yeah, word. Okay. Obstreperous. Okay, I like it means that word boisterously too. recalcitrant. See, that's oh, a good word. Okay, I like them too. <laughs> yeah, you continue, man. You're doing an excellent job, and people—the right. people who call in can't understand. That's not—that's not your problem. They just need to get an understanding, a better understanding. That's what the Holy Spirit is for. You know, when you, you ain't got to believe everything Matt say, but you get to go in. God's what Second Timothy two fifteen tells us: study to show thyself approved, that a work may not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. He, they, they shouldn't try to hold you accountable for the Bible. Per se, you know everything, thinking that you know because you don't agree with them. I don't get it. I, I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, I, I, I hear you, and uh, you know I don't mind. Believe it or not, let's put it this way: I have been yelled at, accused so often for so many years that it's like, okay, mm-hmm. yeah. Now what? I know, man. I've been listening. I've been, I've been listening over here shooting God, hold a bullet boop, 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 on my end. Lord Jesus, <laughs> claim them tongues because they know what they know what they say. <laughs> I don't get it. It's okay to uh, not to agree with you, but I don't don't do you like that. That's wrong. That's wrong. And then you trying to call yourself to be a, 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 a spiritual person, but you can't understand. Why you know have the knowledge and the wisdom and understanding that you have? Don't take try to take it from me. Learn your own and understand where you're coming from, and don't try to knock it down. That's why I don't get. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. Thank on you. That, <laughs> on that day That's of judgment, nice. they gonna know that. <laughs> well, yeah, but you know, I, I do appreciate that. Just uh, we got all. Oh, we only have thirty seconds left. How long have you been listening yeah. to the show? Just curious. Oh my God! For a very long time, I yeah. I uh, call you coming from work and listen one day. It's been a couple of four years, couple of years, I think. Couple yeah, more so. Yeah, yeah, like yes, yes. I love uh, how you give the word. Yes, and how <laughs> you break it down. That's why I'm still with you, man. I learn a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. You know, I would love to get out there because some of the biggest fans we've got for the show are right in your area. I'd love to be out there meeting people. It'd be fun. But, oh, oh wow. Hey, there's the music. we got to go. Okay. Well, well, Have a blast, thanks for calling. Man. God bless. Okay. All right. All right. See, she warms my heart. That's nice. I love that enthusiasm. Praise God. All right. Hey. My great... <laughs> we try to get an English. And by God's grace, we'll be back on here tomorrow. Have a great evening. We'll talk to you then. God bless. Another program powered by the Truth Network.